Alright, alright, alright. Welcome to Sideboard MTG. My name's Eric, and it's time for kind of a special edition of Dev's Deck. Um, he come out with five decks for five dollars each. Perfect little stocking stuffers. If you got some uh, got some people you want to introduce, some uh, you know younger cousins or or grandkids or kids or whatever, and you you happen to pawn Dev's video, I guess you could. Uh, you could do that. Um, seems like a, seems like a good idea. They're, they're sweet little decks, and especially if you're going to be playing them versus each other, I think that all the power levels are great, and they show a really good, um, or they have a really good experience on you know what this color combination does. So, um, pretty cool. I I am uh, I'm interested in playing them. It looks like a lot of you guys are also interested in playing them. So uh, if you like this video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as um, we are playing all of Dev's decks. So I know a lot of people are new, and a lot of people will be um, you know seeing this because of Dev's decks, uh, Dev's deck techs. And if you guys want to check that out, um, there's an information icon right up here. Uh, you should be. It's probably like way over here or something but anyway there's a um, little information icon it'll take you over to dev and you can watch his deck tech on all of these I'm gonna go over them really basically um, and we'll go from there so I'm gonna start this out with the is it spells deck now we've got five games to play and I am gonna be ba playing best of three um, and uh, we we just have like no no <laughs> No, uh, no rares in most of these decks. I think there's three. Uh, we were talking about it earlier. There are three rares in all of the decks combined. Um, so, pretty budget decks. Um, not, not a, not a bad deal here. And because they're commons and uncommons, if you've bought any packs whatsoever, won any packs or anything, you probably have most of this laying around in fodder. I know I probably have you know 20 Goblin Electromancers. Or something like that. I mean, I've always loved the card, so I've, I've got him in multiple different printings. But this is a red-blue deck. Um, there is a Tier 1 version of this deck that you could start, or not Tier 1, Tier 1.5. It's got some bad matchups, but it's a really good deck and um, takes tournaments all the time. Um, and you could easily just start like working into that as you um, as you started, you know, playing with this and upgrading and you know maybe going to a tournament and you might even you know snag some games with this particular deck uh, because once you get an enigma drake down start casting those spells get that graveyard full you, you can end the game really really quick so let's uh let's look at what other ways we have to end the game other than just you know casting a bunch of spells within a goblin electromancer out and smacking with an enigma drake uh, we can ping them with our electrostatic field this also buys us time we've got gutter snipes for an additional threat this has to be answered right like if anyone's ever played against a gutter snipe deck i am super excited to just be playing a gutter snipe deck um, we've got beacon bolt to deal with big creatures yeah it's not like the cleanest answer in the world for you know opposing niv mizzets and stuff like that but it'll deal it'll deal with uh, what you need to deal with You've also got, you know, um, at the common slot, we've got some Is It uh, Guild Gates here for a little mana fixing. We can, you know, trade those late game lands that we don't need in for additional cards with Radical Idea and the Jumpstart mechanic. We've got Burn in our Shocks and our Lightning Strikes, and then um, even Opt, one of the one of the best spells Blue Cantrips allowed in Modern right now. One of one of, um, and you know. It's right here in this cheap little five dollar deck, so uh, pretty sweet. We we can also bounce things with blink of an eye, and then we have a uh, divination for drawing cards. So uh, twenty five dollars for a five deck battle box seems hype. Exactly, like I would love to like if you had um, you know like a group of of kids and you bought the the stuff and put this together and uh you put together you know these five decks that all played fairly well against each other it would be a lot of fun for those uh you know young magic players or even just people new to magic you you've got some friends that you want to get into playing magic keep this laying around so you're not bringing out your big overpowered you know tier one deck against you know their strategies or something like okay which deck do you want to play against or something and it'd be a good way to get them into it and then let f and m uh, let F and M break their heart on their their deck building. Uh, you know, on on playing against tier one. 
I'm not saying lead them down, you know, uh, the wrong path, but uh, it, it's a lot easier to get your friends to play when they don't necessarily know they've got to, they got to have, like, follow a lot, a lot of rules to build their own decks. So, anyway, uh, Wizards should hire dev for pre-constructed products. Maybe, maybe. Nah, kids play Dredgevine decks. Well, after they got started, they would YouTube it and they'd be like, no, I'm going to be playing this. It has four Jace the Mind Sculptors in it. I hear that card's good. Your God Emperor, Pope, President of your gaming club, and you're considering getting these? Well, <laughs> so you started the gaming club. Um, I would highly recommend all of these decks. I mean, um, let's, uh, let's go see how the Is It one plays. There's a lot of um, card. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Like, we'll do this with each of the decks. How's that? Um, what are some cards that you could just add to this this deck that you would add to it? I'm gonna throw some type of sideboard together. No rares. All right, we're gonna stay away from rares. I'm sure everyone can get their hands on a playset of negate. Um, so I'll even use the new one. We'll add four negates. Um, what's another, what's a, what's a good card here? Shatter? Okay. Alright, to give some different effects, right? To say, you know, hey, you, you need to worry about, um, uh, you need to worry about this. Let's say we add, like, two shatters to the sideboard, right? And then, because that's a common. Destroy target artifact. You know, not, not bad. And then, uh, I don't know if any of the other decks have, yes, dive down. That's what I was thinking. Dive downs. Uh, dive down that that's a common too so let's say four to the sideboard um, what else we got here smelt actually smelt what's the difference here is smelt legal smelt is legal what okay so no shatter smelt there we go we're doing this all five yes yeah I'm gonna do that I'm gonna build a sideboard for all five um, just so that I have some cards, like, to maybe bring in. Um, what's a... Ooh. What's the, um... Here it is. Deep Freeze, right? Enchant Creature has base power and toughness. Bring in a couple of Deep Freezes. It's a good answer for... For Nib Mizzet. And then... How much is Lava Coils? Lava Coil is not a cheap card, is it? Like, I, th I think it's just a common or an uncommon, but I don't even have any, so... I've got I've to be able to have them in my collection, and I don't buy expensive cards online. Take that Niv-Mizzet, right? Um, I feel like we need more red cards. Just run, like, Active Treason. <laughs> Um, Banefire? Banefire Light? What is Banefire Light? Di diet Banefire? Mm. So we need standard. Eh, we can't do expansion explosion. Oh, load. So we got dive down, dazzling lights maybe. Ooh, what about the uh, fiery cannonade or charter course? And charter course is an uncommon. I'd rather have charter course than divination, but um, we could go essence scatter, disdainful stroke. Matter of fact, we can we can do that as well. Um, one disdainful stroke, one essence scatter, spell pierce maybe. Spell Pierce, Spell Pierce is uncommon, right? Yeah. Or oh, it's a. Two Spell Pierce over the dive down. And then. I feel like we need something else. I really want, like, Fiery Cannonade. It, what, is, what is Fiery Cannonade? 
Hypothesis. Hypothesis. Okay. Where's Fiery Cannonade? There we go. Fiery Cannonade. Uncommon. Bam. We got a sideboard, right? Horn Swoggle? I mean, Essence Scatter is a common, dude. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run Horn Swoggle when, when Essence Scatter is a common. Um, all right, so there we go. We've got no, no rares in our sideboard. Probably um, a dollar and fifty cent sideboard if you're pulling out of the ten cent pile, right? So, like, you can build most of this deck out of the ten cent, you know, commons and uncommons. Like most store, most stores have that, right? Uncommons over there, ten cents a piece, penny a piece for commons, right? I mean, it's all fodder anyway, right? You feel like that's a sideboard um, you should have laying around? I think so too. I mean, I don't, I don't think any of this is just like impossible to have. So we've got the is it deck. Let's go see if we can play a game. <laughs> Fair enough, Zax. You know, we, we need to do some Discord action at some point anyway. Deep Freeze is super secret tech. I like, I like, uh, I think it's a sweet answer for opposing Nib Mizzets and a lot of other things, but I, I think, I think Deep Freeze is, is pretty decent. Oh man, we didn't get in the game. We did not get in. Somebody else took it. That's, that's merchants kind of jank. Sailor of memes. The history of punch out and uh, don't care about the decks with blue in them. Oh wow. Forget those blue decks. Nobody needs blue decks. You can also run like cancel. Just cancel. Um, if you wanted to, to do that. We won the dice roll. So we get to, we get to do this. Let's fix that white chat. Something seems weird there. Alright. Um, we got a gutter snipe. We got divination. We got some lands. I, looks like a keeper. Cool album. We'll see you, buddy. I am uh, I'm sure you're not the only person that bounces in and out of uh, live streams. Jack B in his house. In the easy. Uh, opponent's thinking about Mulligan to five. He decided he was going to keep his six card hand. I will take that stop out of my upkeep. We have nothing to do on turn one. We'll get our guild gate down past the turn. This will leave us up for a radical idea on, um, on two. And then we'll start playing threats after that. Jolly's collar. All right, all right. So we might be able to play some some budget versus budget. Okay, Mr. Lincoln. Okay. We'll we'll fire off a couple spells, get some things in the graveyard, then we'll we'll be able to beacon beacon boat bolt. You know what? Let's just enjoy the gameplay. I didn't even curl the mustache, man. Yeah. You're going to send a message? Swing with your 0-3? Bring the heat. Bring it. I'll take it. I don't want to even block. Oh, okay. I'm going to go ahead. Radical idea. Make the most use out of my mana. See, there's an op that'll work sweet. Um, especially on turn 4. Like, with the beacon bolt. Or even with the, the divination. So, I mean, our opponent... He's got this... This sweet... Uh, Kanjali's collar, but he's only got this one man of hand, and we've got a gutter snipe. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I am 100% behind the idea of these decks, especially here at you know Christmas time. All right, so that was actually about to get really, really good, and our opponent um, unfortunately didn't 
didn't have much going on. Um, and that would be that, that's game, you know. Um, gutter snipe's pretty broken, and our opponent just didn't want to play against it. And that happens sometimes. So, yes, gutter snipe is uh, three CMC. Oh man, going against Naya mid range. All right, so we won the dice roll again. Um, it's not a gutter snipe hand, but we can keep it. It's an electromancer hand. Or an electrostatic field hand, which could be pretty sweet. Just drop that on too. I mean, because we're not going to make Opt any cheaper. Might as well get some uh, some value out of it. Is this the same guy? Nah, Johnny's welcome. Okay. Mountain off the top would be terrific. I mean, honestly, island off the top would be terrific as well. Probably island off the top would be better. Um, but even a mountain would be good. Because then we could play the other electrostatic field and fire off the op. Island off the top means we could play the goblin electromancer and fire off the radical idea. Or we could just put our enigma drake down and go from there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about getting into more lands. I, I'll spend next turn, if we don't draw a land, just casting Radical Idea to get a land. I mean, even if we pull something like a Shock, it, that would be great. See, that that's pretty good. Um, I actually think this warrants the Electrostatic Field. And then just cast the op. I mean, since we hit our land, we're, like, we're, we're pretty set here. Right? We're so good at magic. Oh, man. Love being this good at magic. Just pull the exact right card you need off the top of the deck. Can't top deck it if it's not in the deck, though. Ooh, Mentor of the Meek. Gained a life. I want to cast this opt. Lightning Strike. Yes, let's leave that on top. I'm, I'm okay with that. Look, another opt. Let's see if we can find a land. If we find a land, I can play Electromancer. If I don't find a land, then I can't play Electromancer. I want to be able to kill this when he goes to play his next creature. Shock? Probably not that bad. That's that's probably a reasonable card right there. Yeah. We set up for a really good turn next turn. I'm just going to let him have his one, one card draw. He might get two, but I'm going to let him have it. I mean, he's still got to pay one to be able to draw the card. So... I think he puts less on the battlefield if he's trying to draw cards. So we'll we'll see. I I I'm I plan on having a, a really good turn next turn. If I can have uh, three mana open. Right now, if he's got something something else, like if he wants to draw a card here, he's got a good chance, and that'll use more of his mana, which means we won't get maybe a an additional creature on the battlefield. I don't think he draws two cards here. I sound very familiar with his list. I am not, but I'm just looking at... Ooh. Look at that. That's going to be brutal. He's going to gain a bunch of life. Ooh. 
beacon bolt, please? Just a beacon bolt. Beacon bolt just sitting on the top of the library would be awesome. Awesome. Let's see what we can find. Beacon bolt. Beacon bolt. Looking for the beacon bolt. I want the beacon bolt. Oh, it's a field. Okay. Alright, well, I've got a lightning strike and shock this thing now. Yeah, I, I, I can't let him have, have this card. He's paying the cost on something. On Sarah's wings. You know what I'm always telling you guys? Like, don't get two for one. Don't don't play cards like this. Don't get two for one. I mean, I might get two for one with his like sheltering light. He's gonna have like a sheltering light, and it's gonna it's gonna wreck me. Got to go for it. Yeah, well, it is two. It, it is a two for two. You're right. I am having to spend two cards to to kill this initially, but I was gonna have to do that anyway. And now because I've timed it, I I get to get this card again, like or just get this card anyway. So yeah. He does trigger a little life gain, but kind of okay with this. Now when he goes to combat, he'll gain more life. Sure, dude. Turn your first striker sideways. Go for it. Beacon Bolt! Alright! That's what I'm talking about. Um, so how do we want to do this? Let's look for that land now. Radical idea. Just another field. Okay. Well, I'm going to pass the turn. Sheltering light would have been would have been pretty good. That would have been if he had had a sheltering light there, I would have been so heartbroken. Especially since I'd already opened my mouth about about getting that. Oh man, yeah, I could have I could have beacon bolted here. Um, I don't think he swings anyway. I'm not um, trading my Goblin Electromancer. And I'll take two to get a little bit more information before I Beacon Bolt. Okay, he's not going to do anything else. Oh, it's a sorcery. That's right. Oh, no. That's good. So, field. Like, he didn't do anything else, really. Let's just go ahead and field again. And then swing for two. I mean, he might have some way to... This is a lot of damage. I mean, we can also put that Enigma Drake down, but this is still a lot of damage. This might be a seal away. I can see him playing seal aways. Settle the wreckage. So, I, I, I don't think I would worry too much about settle. Um... 
at this point, we've got... There's a Jolly Sprite Mate. I don't think that does it, though. I think we just outrun a Johnny's Pride Mate. And and that's a really good Beacon Bolt target. I mean, it has to get up to a 6. I mean, he can definitely make it big, but I don't think he gets it up to a 6. Actually, it'd have to get to a 7 because I'm already at 6. Seeing this guy's jank and you could see him throwing a Cleansing Nova at me right now. No, why would you... Like, I don't know. I'm going to give him a credit enough that he wouldn't put a Cleansing Nova in a creature deck. Um, see, that's just good. So, this, this, this will spell doom for him next turn. Opponent needs pride mate. He's got pride mate. Johnny's pride mate right there. Yeah, this is this seems really, really similar to the mono white list. Um, Leon and Vanguard, Johnny's pride mate, Mentor of the Meek, Knight of Grace, Johnny's Welcome. I mean, if you're running... Like, uh, Johnny's welcome, and you're trying to do the Pride Maid combo. Leon and War Leader is awesome. I am going to say the opponent has drawn eight lands, though, guys. Like, eight lands. Draw a card, deal four. Well, yeah, I mean, I could draw a card, deal four. Or I could just bounce this Pride Maid. Um... So we'll bounce pride mate. Deal four. Radical idea. Pitching beacon bolt. Deal four. Swing in the air. Um, cast beacon bolt from the graveyard. I mean, I could have pitched the land, cast Beacon Bolt, then cast Beacon Bolt again from the graveyard, and I like, just never hit with the Enigma Drake. I was considered not even playing the Enigma Drake. All right, so I know this is not part of Deb's deck, but I want to bring in the Fiery Cannonades. Um, I really want to bring in the Fiery Cannonades. That's bad against Gutter Snipe. So maybe we just need our little dudes to buy us time. We just need, you know, blink of an eye, stuff like that. I'm going to take out Divination for Fiery Cannonade. Um, yeah, I, th I think you just, you just, you're supposed to bring in Fiery Cannonade here. Um, I'll peel back on Gutter Snipe. Yeah, I'll peel back on two Gutter Snipe. And we'll just play it like that. Scatter? Essence Scatter? I... Bringing in the one essence scatter, I, 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 I can see where that that would be, but I don't feel like there's a bunch of cards I really want to take out of the deck. This is a good hand. So we'll we'll lead off with the electrostatic field, allow him to add more to the battlefield, and then sweep his board. If he gets an early pride made down and it it grows, we can blink it. I mean, we're still going to take a little damage. Gate off the top's pretty good. Right, if I wasn't playing Cannonade. Understood. Uh, the main reason I took the Gutter Snipes out, because they're 2-2s. Two Uh-oh. I mean, that's a Lightning Strike, though. <clears throat> well, we'll go ahead his breaks on, make him add more to the board. The opponent's only got two cards in hand. I mean, he mulliganed pretty hard here. Um, trying to get an aggressive start. Um, so, I mean, preventing two of 
something's damaged to a 1-1 one -one when we're dealing 2, seems okay. Um, I, I don't really see this going very well for the opponent. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get a, an attacker out there. Um, it's also, you know, four power, so it lives through the cannonade. Yeah, this, this is gonna be this is gonna be a, a nightmare for the opponent. He'll he'll mulliganing to four is is just it's bad news. Oh, prevent two of that damage. Okay. That still seems fine. Um, it's time to do some stuff. So, maybe we don't. Maybe I just pass another turn and blink or burn something yeah I'll wait one more turn it's whenever he casts so he's gonna be able to I'm killing this at at some point anyway so I'm gonna kill it now I mean, this is going to happen, so let's just go ahead and get it over with. How does Cannonade feel bad? Like it feels bad to to cast cannonade on the opponent. Like I'm I'm not really worried about the shield of realm. I mean he can prevent two of a lightning strike. All right, swing two. <clears throat> We're getting there. Yes, we sighted the snipe out for for um the fiery cannonade. We can't attack this turn. Um, I'm going to wait and draw a card. Yeah, I'm going to wait and draw a card. Ooh, opt. And we've got a land. So, yeah, this is this is how this, this turn is going to go. Let's go to the bottom with that. Hey, we gotta land anyway. Mm -hmm. 
I would actually love it if he went for the equip. If he went for the equip. Just go ahead and bounce it now. Draw a card. No, because if we do it this way, he he has the option of just not even be able to not even being able to get it back down this coming turn, um, which buys us yet another turn of uh, of not having to deal with the creature. Um, so, like, just the timing on when you blink it um, can really really affect the game. Um, This is this is gonna be pretty good. All right, well, um, it's a pet card of yours. Gutter Snipe's a pet card of a lot of people. I mean, it's, it's a really good card. Um, it, it, the problem is, is it just, it dies to absolutely all removal. So, therefore, it's, it's rarely playable, you know? Like, there, there's a big difference between a card being really good and being playable, and... Um, all right, so he gained some. He gained some life here. He equips because he's got all the mana to do all the things now. There's an electromancer. Four, five, six. I mean, he blocks one of these. Which one do you block? The, the the gutter snipe? You block the gutter snipe, right? Yeah. This is this is going to be brutal to play it this way, but I'm going to save this land um, for. Um, we're, we're going to try to go for a nice, timely um, fiery cannonade here. Helm of the Host. Okay, opponent. There's all kinds of spice in this thing. All right, luckily that's not equipped. Does he turn it sideways? He does. All right, he's going to get his triggers. He's going to gain four life. But unfortunately, it's going to be a nightmare. Oh, he's actually going to gain, uh, yeah, four life here. Plus, he's going to gain two more from um, the swings. All right, so we will block, block. He goes back to 12. All right. We swing. This is 10 damage. Cannonade. I paid three mana and I didn't have to. I forgot I had the goblins. Ah, uh, there we go. Wow, that that's that was pretty sweet. Um, that was pretty sweet. 
Uh, honestly, we didn't really need it to be Fiery Cannonade in that particular matchup. Any Anything would have worked, so um, I don't think an extra... I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if uh, an extra um, gutter snipe would have helped right there, but... Um... Yeah, that this deck was it was it was super sweet. All right, so what do we've got for the next one? We got Golgari coming up. All right, Golgari. Let's uh, let's go look at the Golgari list. Um, pretty sweet list. We will be making a sideboard for it uh, with with some stuff. So let's go green, green, black, and some colorless stuff. When does the green black target creature gets plus one plus one gains death touch until end of turn destroy target artifact creature or enchantment? It's probably not bad. Um, all right, so the uh, the idea here with the green black deck is this is a undergrowth. Uh, the the major mechanic from the uh, the new set. You've got cards like um, crawl harpooner which have undergrowth on them you know, for your payouts. And Undergrowth is basically just, you need to put creature cards in your graveyard. The more creature cards that are in your graveyard, the better off you're going to be. And this deck runs 28 creatures. And, um, you know, those, uh, you're going to start off, you know, in the early game with your Land of War Elves. Um, why didn't this end up with... I guess there was just no room. Um, starting out with Land of War Elves, you get to, you know, move into turn three with your, um, you know, or turn two with your Glow Spore Shamans, or um, even turn two a District Guide if you got your Land of War Elf. We've got cards like Gugari Fine Broker to be getting some of these cards back from the graveyard, so we can kind of dump them into the grave um, with very little fear. And then uh, we've got, um, you know, Flying Kill Spells here with the Harpooner. Which is a pretty sweet card. Um, I like it. And you get you get plus X plus zero, and you get to fight something. This is an also a normally clean answer to um, Niv Mizzet, uh, which you know that's that's kind of one of the big creatures you got to worry about right now. If you can't beat a Niv Mizzet, then you or a Lyra, honestly, if you can't beat Niv Mizzet or Lyra, then um, your your deck's probably needing to go back to the uh, the drawing board a little bit there. Uh, and this is just a good clear answer to, to either of those. Now, uh, not the cleanest answer to Lyra because she's going to fight it and they're going to gain 5 life. But it'll kill Lyra none the same. Um, you also get Pilfering Imp, which is a little flyer doing a little ping damage or <clears throat> ripping particular cards out of their hand. You've got Necrotic Wound, um, which the, the line on Necrotic Wound is uh, one of those that a lot of people don't think about. And... Um, you hit a uh, phoenix with this. That phoenix is gone forever. It does say exile instead. So uh, you could you could get away with um, you know destroying um, phoenixes and you know they're exiled kind of like lava coil. Um, we've got a little bit of recursion here in the memorial to folly um, as lo as well as a Golgari fine broker. And then the big payoff, the the big one here, Miss Izoni. Thousand Eyed, Mr. Izoni Thousand Eyed, I don't know. Um, it's an elf shaman. And whenever it enters the battlefield, your undergrowth count turns into 1-1 one, one black and green insect creature tokens. And you have an ability to sacrifice a creature and gain a life and draw a card. So, not bad. Gaining life, drawing cards, sacking dudes. Seems good. Seems good. Um, so, for... For sideboard options here, um, I did throw in the um, status statue. Like when I seen that, because I was, I've always liked this um, the statue part of this, just being able to destroy a creature. Four mana, instant speed, destroy a creature. Um, if we block with something, you know, we we can just give it death touch. We can destroy that way. Um, it's a good way to like deal with carnage, tyrant stuff like that. Um, I do think that we want duress in the sideboard. A lot of people are calling for duress in the sideboard, and I I agree. I think the rest is a uh, is a good answer, and uh, we'll grab we'll grab some of those. Let's get some Ixalan to rest, huh? How's that? And then let's say let's say all four on the duress, and then what else do we want? Um, a lot of people are saying Kite Cell Freebooter. How much is how much is Kite Cell? 
Is that an expensive card? I don't want to add... I don't want to add anything of, like, major value. Like, cast downs an uncommon. You can run a couple cast downs. Uh, it's got four moment of craving in it, but... I like cast down. Dusk Legion Zealot? Maybe not. We could Kite Self Rebooter. It is an uncommon. You guys are right. Kite Self Rebooter is not bad. Um, what do we want? Three Kite Cells? Poison Tip Archer. How about um, a Roskin um, to make them all block? I don't know. Maybe Vicious Offering over Cast Down? I like that. I, I kind of like Vicious Offering over Cast Down. Poison Tipped Archer. It's probably not very bad. I don't even know if I have Poison Tipped Archer, so... I do not. I do not. So I'm not going to be adding that. Um... Yeah, I don't want to take even more time by, like, having him to go pick up, like, run over to one of the, um, bots and picking up some cards or something. Um, we've already got four Moment of Craving. Walk the Plank's not bad. I don't think we want Walk the Plank. Hmm. Naturalize. That's a card. That's a card that, that probably just deserves to be here on a basic level. If we're trying to play this on on some basic level, Naturalize probably probably deserves to be in this this green deck. Yargle. 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 Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Uh, rapid Bite? Maybe? Song of Fraley's is an uncommon. Titanic Growth? Maybe. That kind of... That kind of... That's kind of one of those things that, um... That would fit. Swarm Mage? I don't think... I don't think so. I, why not Crushing Canopy? Hmm. Why not Crushing Canopy? How about Wild Growth Walker? <laughs> we don't have any Explore. Wow, that's an uncommon. Wild Growth Walker is an uncommon. And then you've got Merfolk Branch Walker and Seeker Squires is uncommon. Seems like you could have built a very budget card there, but I'm guessing those cards are a little bit more expensive than I'm thinking. Um, Where is Crushing Canopy? Three mana, right? Crushing Canopy, three mana? Ooh, this is the card. Two copies of Plague Crafter. There we go. We've got a sideboard. Plague Crafter. Untamed Kavu? Okay. There has to be some card draw option. Arcane Encyclopedia? Ooh, okay. So some way to get more cards. Um, how do we get more cards for the cheap? Like Gruesome Menagerie? To be able to get cards back? I mean, we have our Izoni for card draw. Ooh, I could run Rex Sage. That's been reprinted a million times. Um, I could run Rex Sage over Naturalize. It's a creature. Goes with that that theme a little bit better, right? Um, I think I'm just gonna run it like that. Uh, Alright, so what do I want Crushing Canopy for? To to kill Flyers? I've got Main Board Crawl Harpooner I, I can kill Flyers with. Bloodfast is probably a little expensive. Um, we're trying to keep... like We're trying not to add like more than 
more than like 75 cents to a sideboard here. Um, these might have overdone it a little bit with the Plague Crafter. Um, but try, I'm trying not to add much to the board, keeping it simple and yet sticking to you know, the game plan. Um, which may actually, because we're a creature deck, it may actually benefit to go for Kite Cell 3 Duress. I think I'll do that. Yeah, we're we're just trying to stay uh we're trying to stay as cheap as possible. I mean the entire deck's a five dollar or less deck, and then you know, if we don't I, I get it. I um uh, I mean Ravenous Chupacabra is not horrible, right? It's an uncommon. I, I get that I I'm not real big on, on budget decks, but Dusk Legion Zealot. So if we ran Dusk Legion Zealot why would we run that over, like, instead of duress and just worry about our, our, um, kite self rebooters? Plague Crafter is only 67 cents. So I added a, like, Plague Crafter is probably too expensive for the deck then. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably just simply too expensive for the deck. I don't care, I'm leaving it in. <clears throat> kind of. That kind of kills it, though, right? What about Vona's Hunger? Is Vona's Hunger... How much is that card? Isn't that a rare? It might be a rare. I don't have any cards. I don't have any Vona's Hungers. So it doesn't matter. Alright, whatever. Let's go play it like this. Okay, Golgari. Here we go. Vona's is way cheaper. Then you could run Vona's Hunger, right? <clears throat> if Vona's Hunger is way cheaper, then you could run Vona's Hunger. Yeah. Vona's Hunger is 48 cents. And that's a rare, right? Alright, well, we can't keep a no lander, so I'm going to mulligan. This is keepable. District Guide uh, to do too. I mean, we can go up our curve. <clears throat> sure, we'll put it on top. Make sure that we get another another card here because pilfering imp's not gonna come into play till a little bit later this is gonna be a nightmare okay <clears throat> uh we've ran the is it guild already mr enoch Ooh, moment of craving, and he just swung at me with that. So he's got a four drop he wants to play, right? <clears throat> I I think I, I think I have to put pressure on the board if I plan to do that. Um, I am not going to use its ability to put a, a land on top of my library. We are at um, the second deck. Ooh, Dryad Green Seeker. All right, we're getting somewhere, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting somewhere. Um, so does he give up Dryad Green Seeker for the Glow Spore Shaman? Let's find out. I mean, I'm wanting to moment. I wanted a moment of craving that anyway. I mean, I, I don't get through with the extra damage here, but I, I wanted a moment of craving that anyway. I mean, if he didn't play anything and he missed a land drop, I was killing the Lana War Elf. I mean, we do have a Molder Hulk in the graveyard, so. Alright, he's going to look for a land. Forest revealed. He might have another three drop. Fine broker. See, that's going to be pretty good. Um. I 
I think it's time to, to actually get this imp down <clears throat> so that we can and then we'll go ahead play our district guide as well look for a black source here with the district guide which will will help us with our izoni and our golgari fine broker so we'll get that black source shuffle the deck now we can use fine broker to get back a molder hulk imping ain't easy right imping ain't easy I mean, Molder Hulk's pretty. He scooped it up. Every word is a made up word, right? All words are made up. Is that Seth's Frenzy deck? It may be. If it is, if it is the Frenzy deck, then um, I'm highly interested in dropping Imp for Rex Sage and Status Statue. Maybe drop one Fine Broker. Run it like that. Maybe Kite Self Rebooter. If we go to game three, I'll, I'll run Kite Self Rebooter. Freebooter and Plague Crafter. Why would you want Plague Crafter against a deck that's probably gonna have a bunch of creatures? Like you, you don't get any you don't get any agency there. You don't get you don't get to select anything, so uh, this is pretty good. I'm going to keep this hand. Just start out with my Lana War Elf. Um, and then if he kills that, we can get into a Necrotic Wound. Um, it's probably not going to be bad. Cruel Harpooner is probably not going to be the best in it. What? That's a blue... I'm confused. I'm confused. You're not even trying. You're just you're just saying things. That should be the other side of the mom saying, right? Like, <sighs> okay. You thought Selesnya looked the weakest? Maybe. Uh, what do we... We want another green source here. Could have got a guild gate, but... So now, like, we get to start attacking next turn, maybe? Otherwise, we just play, you know, a Crawl Harpooner, and... He's got a land, so he won't attack. He won't, he won't tap it yet. Drag Green Seeker... Oh, it's a two drop. That's right. No target. Like, he's definitely going to be able to... Like, we get a, we get a weird little play next turn, right? So, yeah, this is fine. Actually, this is this is actually really good. So, Globe Spore may dump some things, which turn on the Crotic Wound. Either way, like, yeah, that works. So, like, if he double blocks or if he blocks and blocks. Okay, he's going to double block here. Um, Alright, so... Let's go... Necrotic Wound on the, the first one. So, we'll actually get to kill one of these. And then we get to keep our District Guide. 
Uh, the other option was to let him block both, and after one of them had the damage on it, uh, we would get to we'd get to um, kill it anyway. But we would have lost our district guide that way. Um, since he actually put a creature in our graveyard, it made it a little bit easier. All right, so again with the, the Green Seeker looking for that land. He hit it, though. Um, I think I'm going to, to keep attacking his mana base uh, the best I can here. I think he's a big mana, mana deck. He was trying to use, you know, control spells to try to hang in there. Take this opportunity to like get in for the extra swing here with Lana War Elf. It could help down the line. I'm gonna I'm gonna hang on to Reclamation Sage. I'm worried that he might have something huge. Your new LGS and it sells alcohol. Sounds pretty sweet. Um, that's it. That's a thing now. You can you can uh, sell alcohol at Magic uh, events, which is that's that's its own thing, I guess. Well, this is this is sweet. Okay, um, so he takes the three. Maybe, maybe he takes the three. I don't know. Blink of an eye. He blinked it. Blinkity blink. That's fine. I'm just going to go Gari Fine Broker the um, Close Poor Shaman back. It doesn't sound great, but it's another decent body. And I play it now. It's another card that kills Dryad Green Seeker if he blocks with it. Um, and that's that's basically just what I'm looking for. Uh, Memorial to Folly seems terrific. I'll put that like we'll draw the Memorial to Folly, then we can sack the Memorial to Folly, and then the fo following turn, Izoni. Oh no, Memorial enters tapped. Nightmare. All right, so we'll play the Memorial to Folly. Swing with these. I guess we're just being like hyper aggressive, so I just like replay the the Harpooner as well. Maybe like double blocks. Yeah, this is fine. Oops. We'll just play the the three two here. Um Okay. He's still looking for land. Found Hinterland Harbor. Giving this thing, like, um, giving this thing, like, um, haste would be, would be pretty cool. I don't know how you would do it, but it would be cool. I'm just waiting for him to get to, like, omnip ob omnipotent, ob whatever. Waiting for him to get to that, and then it's going to be a nightmare. Like, it's probably just going to be game over. I mean, he's got to have, like, more blink of an eye, things like that. No land on top. He takes six.
Okay. I mean... We don't have many cards in the graveyard because he hasn't been able to kill them. Uh, but if he doesn't just go off right here, then we're kind of okay. As long as it's a 2-1. Nexus of Fate. Oh, man. Right, he's going to draw another card. Or he's going he's gonna to take an extra turn here. Chart, of course. Okay. That's pretty good. Buys him a little bit of time. Death Gorge Scavenger. Okay. If he targets Izoni. Does he have Blink? Does he have blink of an eye? I'm going to memorial the folly, the um, the ghost for shaman, to keep him from being able to gain two life by eating it with his Death Gorge Scavenger, which means he's dead. he needs one more blocker or remove one of my my multiple guys here in order to um, stay alive one more turn. This way we're at least lethal this very next turn. Uh, whereas if we would have gotten back a Zoni, yes, we'd have been able to play a Zoni, get a couple extra dudes, probably still would have led to a win. Oh, man, okay. All right. Probably should have gotten back the Zoni now. Um, let's get Memorial of Folly. Play land. Go wider. Put him at one. Uh, a crutch to play otherwise crappy decks. It's hard to take infinite turns, and if you build one that can do it, whether you're doing it with, like, whatever you're doing it with, that's pretty good. So... Well, we killed the Death Gorge Scavenger, which was the real nightmare. Like, I'm, I was more worried about Death Gorge Scavenger than I was anything else. Although, I'm worried about ob omniscience and then casting a, um, the, um, overwhelming insight and then drawing seven cards and then just casting everything in his hand. So, like, that's game over for us if he does that. I respect you for respecting me for respecting his opinion. <laughs> uh, no, that's horrible madness. I've I've had I've had computers go out on me, man. It's it is a nightmare. It is a nightmare. It's still busta. There's. There's seven cards. Thankfully, though, he did not do it with... Um, he did not do it with um, uh, an omniscience on the battlefield. That would have been a nightmare. Okay. So, everybody knows we have the Memorial of Folly on the top. We swing and go from there. 
I mean, he's got to be able to answer two, two attackers. <laughs> we remember when that happened to you. Yeah. It was a nightmare. I didn't like it. Alright, what do we got next? Boros. Boros. So what do you guys think about the... Um, the Golgari deck, right? Golgari. It was fun. I, I liked it. Uh, we we are 2-0 here with our decks. Uh, our, you know, our $5 budget decks playing against other, you know, stuff. The Mutual. Welcome to the sideboard MRS. The Mutual Respect Society. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. <coughs> oh, oh, coffee, wrong pipe. Ah. Ho, oh, oh. oh. All right, so we've got uh, we've got a Boros deck here. Now this is a um, you know, red white Boros. Um, so you could say this is kind of a mentor, kind of tokens, that sort of thing. Uh, we've got some we got some pretty cool, cool cards, and um, they we've got the mentor backbone playing in here. So I think all of these decks have their guild gates in them. So I, I'm I'm just going to quit talking about the guild gates. Let's do this. Converted to mana cost. All right. Okay, so one of the things I thought was sweet was this card, Militia Bugler, falling in at the um, at the, the uncommon rate. Militia Bugler, not bad. Um, we've got Shocks and Lightning Strikes for removal. We've got um, Goblin Banneret, which, you know, late game mana sink, pump it up. Uh, make sure that we get an extra counter moved over somewhere else that can then maybe you know get extra counter somewhere else we can do the same thing with our boros challenger um, getting extra counters is really sweet when you're playing cards like healer's hawk um, you get um, you know your life linkers off of a haunted witness or something like that you've got the uh, sun home stalwart which has first strike so if you can start getting some uh, plus one one counters on him then that works and all of these cards fit into the uh, two power which means you can get them off the militia bugler and then once you get a few dudes out there it's pretty sweet to be able to just go heroic reinforcements bump all of these guys up swing in um, you can pay one mana to give integrity to something so that it can then um, you know give mentor to something else it's it's pretty sweet so uh, a lot of cool little cards there I, I kind of like what's going on um, in the Boros stack so let's um, let's pull some um, sideboard cards here for Boros and just because it's in red and I, I think that's this is something that we probably need to do um, I'm going to I'm going to pull the smelts again. I think that there should probably do, be two smelts in one of these little budget decks. Like I, I like having the idea of some artifact removal, things like that. So, all right. So we need white cards as well. Um, so what do we want for sheltering light? Can we get away with sheltering light? No, no. It has to be a common or an uncommon. Like, I'm, I'm going to leave that restriction on. I'm not going to worry about the price on it, but it needs to be a common or an uncommon. Um, all right, so Dauntless Bodyguard, like, originally comes to mind, but um, we could also throw in two Demystifies, right? So we can get enchantments, we can get artifacts. Um... Are we already running the marshal? No. No. So moment of triumph, target creature gets plus one or plus two plus two until end of turn. You gain life. Um, I think it's sheltering light. Give our dudes some um, some some indestructible. Baffling in. I hope I have baffling in. Slash of talons. Vampire Zeal. Um, fight with fire. That might be a that might be a usable. Fight with is is fight with fire. Uh, 
Um, let's see what we can find. Mighty Leap. Yeah, Baffling Inn. There we go. Baffling Inn's an uncommon, so we'll grab those three Baffling Inns. Waiting on pictures to load. Pride of Conquerors might be worth it. Seal Away could be usable. Two Seal Aways. Um, did this deck have Conclave Tribunal? It does. It has two Conclave Tribunals. Raptor Hatchling. That's a good card. Sure Strike's not bad. Um, sure Strike helps win in combat. I mean, it, it's a trick, but... I mean, that's... Alright, maybe not sure strike. Okay, maybe not sure strike. Is fight with... Do I have fight with fire? If I don't have fight with fire, then I can't... I'm not going to use it, but... Yes, I've got fight with fire, and I've got um, fiery cannonade. So we'll, we'll pull a couple fight with fires. Probably should have had fight with fire in one of the other decks. Um, one more slot. One more... risk factor sure maybe we'll be a very fast deck and we can we can get that risk factor in against aggressive decks you respect the lack of fandom for sideboard sideboarded combat tricks card draw again Ixalan's binding I think that's a rare Prevent three, gain three, or revitalize. How about risk factor? We're an aggressive early, you know, deck. We're trying to get in there very fast, and I, I think that risk factor would might actually draw us some cards. And Ixlon's binding is an uncommon. That's that's a thing. Factor is a rare. Oh man! All right. Jeez, I figured since I had it late, I didn't even look at it. Okay, um... I could get two more Conclave Tribunals or Ixalan's Binding. I like Ixalan's Binding. Do I have Ixalan's Binding? I don't think so. Did I miss it? No, there it is. So we'll run Ixalan's Binding over Seal Away. Okay, so somebody give me an answer for some card draw... We have two Conclave main board, all right? Dev, Dev gave us two Conclave for the main board, um, so so we get to we get to go from there. So we've got one card spot open for some type of card draw. Has to be cheap. Um, Some kind of card draw. Flame of the Kelp. That's an uncommon. Urza's Book. What is Urza's Book? I don't even know what Urza's Book is. Flame of the Kelp could work. Do a search for draw. Alright. So if we go draw... We go rarity, common, uncommon, um, common and uncommon. Urza's Tome. Pay three, draw a card, then discard a card unless you exile a historic card from your graveyard. I mean, chances of doing that often. I mean, we could always just run, like, Tormenting Voice. The Burrow Locket. Okay. The Boros Locket. Mentor of the Meek is like, what, 50 cents? Yeah, but he's a rare. Like, he really is. Mentor of the Meek should probably be the card draw slot. I don't have any Mentor of the Meeks. Sorry. It could be Flame of the Keld, Tormenting Voice, or... I mean, it could be Crash Through. 
target creature gains trample until end of turn. It's not really what I'm looking for, though. Warlord's Fury. Give it first strike. Draw a card. Sorcery speed, though. Um... I like this card, Triumph of Gerard. This this card's actually it's it's on my sleeper list as being a decent card in these Boros stacks. Uh, just Triumph, it's good. Pirates Pillage. Right, it says draw step. Right, I was looking for it. It's still cheaper than Binding, uh, but because you get the mana back. Right. Okay. Um, going with Flame of the Killed. I'll even take out one smelt because I and the and for one other flame of the kill. I think demystify will be used more than you know destroy an artifact. Um. So I'll run. I'll run like this. There we go. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be our sideboard. Tormenting Voice could work. I, I think Flame of the Kill will work. I mean, the deck's really, really cheap. We've also got a little bit of card draw with our Militia Bugler, which not a bad. Not a bad way to go. Um, we have, you know, a lot of red sources like Goblin Banneret, Shock, Lightning Strike. So I mean, we could make use out of uh, the backside of Flame of the Kelp. Um, cut a Sheltering Light. So just go two, two, and two. I can respect that. Like, because again, we're trying to we're trying to like throw these sideboards together to to kind of stick with the. The gift giving theme, right? I like sheltering though. I, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you on the shelter. But I, I kinda like the here you have a couple options for destroying artifacts, you have a couple options for enchanting, um, protecting your creatures, destroying big creatures, destroying little creatures, destroying anything, um, you know, setting up board states. You get to teach a lot. Um, so this would be a, this would be a sweet little deck. So I am gonna jump over here. Um, I am going to jump over here to um, the the lobby. I'm going to throw up the the screen for you guys, let you guys uh, talk in chat for a moment. I'm going to go refill the coffee cup, uh, take a quick bio, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get to some gameplay. All right. So enjoy the music. Uh, I'm not going to leave it on Ninja Turtles. There's a new like uh, maybe not Sonic and Knuckles. What do we want here? Kind of have some sweet new song, right? Yeah, you know what? Sonic and Knuckles will work. Um, he said throw up, what? I. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do. I'm going to throw up the, the, the uh, screen there. All right, so uh, I'll be back in just a moment and we'll we'll get into some gameplay.
All right, we're back. Um, okay, so we're going to get into some gameplay with our $5 budget Boros. Here we go. Boros, Catman 9000. Let's do it. Uh, you guys, what are you guys talking about? Cereal break? <laughs> Cereal break? Uh, you guys. Good old cereal breaks. All right, well, I mean, we can get started with Goblin Banneret, and if he has creatures, we can just deal with all of them. I don't mind this. Because we have 28 creatures, I'm, I feel good about the fact that we could draw some more creatures. So I'm, I'm going to keep. This may not be the greatest thing in the world. All right, well, let's Goblin Banneret, and we'll go from there. Oh man, Ricard's Rapier. Or Rapier. It's a good card. It's a good card. Let's go ahead and get in. Merfolk Trickster. We'll shock it. Before blocks. Boros Guildgate and pass. Well, we haven't necessarily won just because the opponent's playing islands. I mean, he's probably got dive downs, things like that. This may pull a dive down from him. Well, perhaps I was supposed to buff my creature there. I think I'm going to take now to, to do my lightning strike. No dive down. Oh man, brutal. No creatures, just brutal. Okay, well, we're just going to keep passing the turn. Boros Challenger, I mean, that's a play. I assume the opponent's got counter spells. No counter here. How does he deal with this? Trickster? Okay. Well, Trickster with a um, Curious Obsession on it would be bad. No Curious Obsession? Okay. Okay. Well, um, Boros Challenger... We'll keep matching our opponent here. <laughs> Alba? Yeah, man, you got to do something about that. Absolutely got to do something about that. All right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try to get rid of the trickster. Haunted Witness isn't bad. It's another threat. And that's something we can be swinging with, so that'll work. We also have an answer for uh, Tempest Gen if he gets a Tempest Gen. Exclusion Mage? Okay. So as he bounce, yeah, it's kind of what I figured.
We'll burn the mage. Well, there's a guild gate. Get in with our haunted witness. Replay Boros Challenger. This is this is a fair spot to be in. Sleep. Okay. He's buying time with sleep. Militia Bugler. I think this is a good card to play. Let's see if we can find another threat. Healer's Hawk, perp. All right. Let's go ahead and play the Healer's Hawk out. The opponent's only got one card in hand, so he fit to get Molly Wop. He might be about to get one Molly Wop. <laughs> he fit to get Molly Wop. Um, let's see if he's got the counter spell. Heroic reinforcements. Not targeting you, opponent. Sideboard. Here we go. Molly whopped. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. Oh, the opponent's fitting to get Molly whopped. Okay, well, I am bringing in Demystify. I am bringing in Baffling In. Um, and for that, I am going to remove Haunted Witness. And one heroic reinforcements. What else? Do, what else might we want to remove? Sunhome stalwart and a Boros challenger, maybe. Maybe it's just the second heroic reinforce. Oh, we keep the heroic reinforcements and remove the. Um, the integrity. There we go. Now the reason I'm bringing in Baffling in is for the Tempest Gens. And I'm um, bringing in the um, the um, Demystifies versus this could be a bad hand but it could like Shock could also be one of the most devastating things in the world. If he, if he wants to come out with like this, this super great hand um we, we can really put a hurting on that just with these multiple shocks. I know how good shock is against these decks. So I'm... Um, I'm just going to, to make use of, of a double shock hand. A lot of times they don't have a lot of creatures, and if you're able to like keep them off of the few creatures that they have, you can you can win the game just off of that. So, Siren Storm Tamer. Okay. Not a bad card, but in a bad position right here. I think I play Militia Bugler. Okay, he does have a counter spell. So we'll see if he gets his uh, if he starts getting sideways. Pizza rolls are the best rolls after cinnamon rolls. Fair enough.
Okay, land's pretty sweet. Let's go for the lightning strike. See if he sacks the iron storm tamer. Dive down. That'll work. So, dive down. Boros Challenger. Pass. Oh, there's a Tempest Gen. He's tapped out, too, so... I'm gonna go... He's not tapped out. How does this work? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do it this way. We kill Siren Storm Tamer. Oh no, he gave us the gin. Oh, he, yeah, he was tapped out, so he had to give us the gin. Now, I mean, he can he he can take our goblin banneret. Yeah, he's tapped out. Yeah, I, that that was that was my I, I was looking at it wrong. I was thinking he could still just sack this for some reason. All right, we're still not in um, a really bad situation here. <clears throat> We do get to keep applying pressure. Yeah, that works. And then we'll play the Healer's Hawk. Oh. Sleep. Oh, opponent. Come on. Whatever. Ring City is really making you miss your spells. Well, I'm going to swing. And I'm going to mentor everything on Healing Hawk. Which will offset the tempo even worse for the opponent. I mean, first strike's bad enough. But now we've got a healer's hawk over here. Technically, if I would have made this bigger, I could have kept making, you know, the other stuff larger. But, um... I, I like the, the swing here with the healer's hawk. Dark Souls 3... Playing a strength build, no spells. Uh, okay. Okay, well, there we go. There was the Boros deck for you guys. Um, so far, we're we're winning.
we're winning. Mages. Lol. I'm playing ESO right now, so I'm actually not playing any Dark Souls. I I um I decided I was gonna like just play some ESO since it's free this month. Uh, if you have well not free, but if you have Game Pass on Xbox, you can uh, you can play ESO. Um, so I've got some friends that are trying it out, and um, I had I had gotten a copy of the game back when Marwan was like ten bucks. So um, I have ESO. So if they're they're playing it right now, we're we're having a little bit of fun with it, seeing if um, we can. You know, get to a um, you know level 50 character and see what you know some of that stuff's about. So, um, first time really playing ESO. I'm having a lot of fun with it though. All right, back to our collection. Cryptic Rocket. Thank you for following. Thank you. Respect the five dollar deck, y'all. Right? I mean, we had some uh, we had some good good times right there um next we're going into what have i got demir wow Slesnia's last on the list all right so this is a demir deck um pretty pretty straightforward here we've got a moment of craving for early removal we've got price of fame to be able to deal with anything uh we can draw cards with notion rain we have um you know essence scatter murmuring mystic pretty sweet uh pretty sweet card uh, Murmuring Mystic, just making a bunch of dudes off of our um, surveils and things like that, seems really, really good. You know, getting you know disinformation campaign back over and over, uh, running discovery dispersal and you know syncopate things like that. Um, all seems great. You get a Night Vale Predator down. It's a nightmare for uh, for a lot of people. I bought all the cards I needed for this entire like show. I actually bought them instead of renting from Mana Traders this time. Uh, two tickets. It took it took two bucks to buy all the cards for all five decks on Magic Online. So, um, pretty sweet. I mean, it's a it's a great place to start. All right, so let's let's pull up blue, black. Get rid of the white. Get rid of the red. And what are some cards we want to be running? Hmm. So with blue and black, I'm guess like so we've kind of got the surveil thing going. Maybe we want some dazzling lights. We may cut it later, but I'll put a couple dazzling lights in right now. Um, dead weight may be good. Divest, duress, that sort of thing would be good. Maybe a couple spell pierce. I don't know. We we can we can definitely trim this down. Um, do we have creatures we want to protect? Not really. Um, Night Vale Predator, maybe, maybe we want to pre protect um, our Murmuring Mystic. Um, more Demise, Duress, and Negate. Okay, all right. So, I guess against a I, I still think that the Turbo Surveil deck is like the budget way to go there. The deck's like really, really cheap. All right, so let's go pull three to rest. Let's pull this over so you guys can see it. I know you guys can't see that. My bad. Um, so let's go three to rest. Divest. Target creature reveals their hand. You get an artifact or a creature. Um, fungal infection, maybe. I mean, we've got moment of craving, so maybe not fungal infection. Um... I mean, what what fits the idea of this deck? Kind of controly, I guess negate, right? So let's let's get some negates. A couple blinks. Blinks a good card, cheap card. Deals with almost anything. A couple disdainful stroke. Maybe um, a few negate here. Negates. Thought Erasure. Yeah, Thought Erasure is a little expensive, though, isn't it? Is it a common or uncommon? Um, I don't think we're doing the Merfolk Trickster plan. Kite Cell Freebooter. Like, I think we're more spells with this deck. Ooh, Thought Erasure is an uncommon. Oh, wow. 
Like, do we just have all the hand hand disruption? Like, all right. So let's say we cut dazzling lights. We've got a ton of hand disruption now. That even has surveil on it, so it works with the surveil mechanic. Um, let's say we need a better answer against like control decks, right? Um, like we want to be. We want to be aggressive as well against control decks. I, but then again, I think I want like this clean answer versus Niv Mizzet. I mean, we can kill Niv, Niv Mizzet with our Price of Fame. Like we can block it with a Night Vale Specter or Night vale Predator, that sort of thing. But they don't really have to swing with it. Mm, let's let's say we run it something like this. Dampening Sphere versus Control. What's up, Jason? How you doing, man? We're we're going through all five of these decks. Unmoored Ego. Ooh. I don't know if I have Unmoored Ego. Do I? I don't have Unmoored Ego. I am sorry. Um... Like, I, I really wish I had, like, Murder could be a good card. Murder could have made the main board. Yeah. Yeah, Murder could have made the cut in the main board instead of, like, Price of Fame, but I like the Surveil, too. Um, kind of think we're, I kind of think I like where we're at right now. This seems all right. Um... I might actually want more true counter spells, though. Uh, Sinister Sabotage is an uncommon. Let's stay instead of two duress, two sinister sabotage. We'll just go into this really countering game, um, and it's got surveil. So, I like those duress though. So maybe not the deep freeze and and stick with the duress. We'll just thought erasure away the. I like that. I like I like that idea. Yeah. Um, not a fan of the bounce. Would rather have removal or counter. All right. Well, we've got you know essence scatters main board. We've got disdainful stroke, sinister sabotage, and negate. Um, we've got duress and thought erasure to hand, like rip the cards out of their hand, and then we have two bounce whatever. Um, dream eater. What? Five five hexproof. What has hexproof? Uh, Nine of Malice actually might have been a really good card to put in our sideboard against the mono white decks. Like to be able to bring in an extra creature against the against the other decks might sabotage is like a dollar. Wow. All right. So I'll take sabotage out. I'll go negate disdainful stroke. We'll go three three and three. Like I want more counter in a deck like this. But I also like Blink because I think we're going to end up taking a turn off to be able to do something like a Murmuring Mystic or something like that. Man, I really wouldn't mind getting um, Knight of Malice on the battlefield. Snapper is good, but the 4-drop already has Hexproof. Right, and we've got a Hexproof creature. Alright, I'm going to run it like this. We're going to go We're gonna go for it. Here's Demir. J... J Grom, J Grom.
cold water snapper. Right, plus death touch and flying. All right, let's see what we do with the Demir deck. Um, this is not the the best hand in the world, but I think it plays. Uh, we have we have outs against you know uh, an early aggressive deck. We have outs against um, you know control decks as we have a, a bunch of of draw here. Okay, he's aggressive. Here we go. <clears throat> Nightmare situation. Although, it could be okay. Black source off the top. Let's do this. Come on. All right, um, drawing three notion reigns is a little bit of a nightmare. He uses his mana here to put the extra counter on the swift blade. Okay, we're not. Now he's going to... Remember, timing. Timing, ladies and gentlemen. Timing. Well, we take another fair to decent hit here. Opponent doesn't realize how Mentor works. And I'm going to let him get into combat. Bam. All right. I mean, he's going to hit us for a lot again. I'm going to Murmuring Mystic here. Nope. You can have all the cards, opponent. We're going to roll like this. I'm going to give the opponent all the cards. All the cards. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got, I got super quiet. Um, I was... Uh, confuse him sorry I, w I was looking through some different lines um like this one allows us to block the goblin banneret and if he has a bunch of cards like i don't want to let my life total drop low um we block the bat goblin banneret we do get to do a lot of cleanup um even if he has like double strike going on like we take the four here instead of taking the four from never mind never mind I mean if he has if he has some way to pump this then I'm I'm in trouble. Run amok. Alright. And trample. Yeah, that that that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. I mean, yeah, this is this still we hit we take six here. This is still a nightmare situation. All right, so let's golden demise. I would have been at one. Okay. 
I mean, he gets to draw all the cards. Tajik. Ouch. Hit me for four. That's that's painful. That is very painful. And an Adanto. Ouch. Ouch, opponent. Well, that's game because of the Adanto. Um, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and concede. I'm not going to let him know that I have uh, kill spells like Price of Fame and things like that. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go to the sideboard. Now, what do we have to help us against a very aggressive little deck like this? Um, so Syncopate's probably going to be good. Blink's probably not bad either, though. He spends effort and mana into things. Yeah, we would have been dead a long time ago if the opponent would have been mentoring right. You're 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 right. Um, do I take out syncopate for dress or? Thought Erasure? Like, Thought Erasure seems really slow against the opponent. Um, I think Notion Rain's like the no no here. So maybe I, I keep. I do I bring in Thought Erasure and leave in Syncopate? Maybe Syncopate's better? Yeah, let's run like that. Take out Campaign? I don't think I have enough cards to bring in if I take out campaign. I I really don't. Like I um campaign doesn't cost me life to draw cards. Yeah, I I get it. Like <clears throat> it was either this or the the Evolving Wilds. I I think this is the play. All right, he's coming in tap, so we've got time. All right, so we we just stay ahead of him here. We've got we've got a good position on our mana, and we stay ahead of him and uh, run him out of cards. That's a Danto. We can allow that. We've got a really good answer for a Danto. So let's go ahead and do that now. And um, this would be a good turn four. So let's go ahead and Evolving Wild, start thinning our deck a little bit. Okay, there's a Tajik. We have a good answer for Tajik. Two mana. Price of Fame. This spell costs two less to cast if its target is a legendary creature. Destroy that creature. This is card bug. This song? Tajik is legendary. Price of fame. That's not cool, y'all. Like, that's not cool. It will not. It keeps asking me to pay four mana for Price of Fame, and Tajik's legendary. Report it. Yeah, I'm. I'm going. I'm going to try to 
fortunately Alright, so I'm going to go Guildgate to the Graveyard. I'm going to leave Moment of Craving on top. I'd be good with drawing a Moment of Craving next turn. He's got five cards in hand. I'm, I'm really interested in Thought Erasuring this turn. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead. Thought Erasure. See what we can pull out of his hand. What What is devastating here? Wow. He's Risk Factoring. Yes, I, I will take the damage. Alright, so Thought Erasure reveals Frenzied Rage. Okay, and he's got Clifftop Retreat. I mean, if I just take Swift Blade Vindicator, right? Night Veil Predator on top. Seems good. I'll leave that. We'll pass. So, Risk Factor is not going to be a lot of draw for him here. Did he get a creature? Is this a Tajik? Or is he just going to flashback Risk Factor for 4 damage? He is. 4 damage? I mean, it happens. We, we do know that we have to answer all his creatures at this point. So... I'm going to pass. I want to be able to syncopate. There's a goblin banneret. Oh, actually, I'm not going to syncopate that. Now I kind of wish I would have played the Night Veil vale Predator. Like, this is okay, right? I mean, that means he drew a maximized velocity. Okay. I mean, I'm at 11, but... We know what his other two cards are. So, yeah. Let's deal with the creature. Okay. Here we go. Now we have a, have a moment. I mean, Night Veil Predator might have been the better card, but if our opponent doesn't draw creatures here and we draw spells, then we're going to be looking pretty good. So, I think I syncopate just like anything he cast here. No matter what he cast, we just syncopate it. Wow, just land. I know I'm playing this out super slow, but... What if it's Tajik and nobody has ever tried to stick to? I don't know. Seems seems good, right? Like, Tajik's just not actually legendary. He's secretly non-legendary. Even though his text says he's legendary. Um, I, I'll report it to Wizards. They'll fix it. Alright, so I'm going to syncopate this. Four, three, four, five. We'll make a dude. Okay. 
I mean, I know it's a really slow way to go, but I didn't want to play. I didn't want to play these five dollar decks like with loose play. Like I, I wanted to have more engaging play here. Um, so I'm trying to be a little bit safer. Oh man, more land. He got rid of, so he's keeping he's keeping the dudes. Okay. He's keeping the dudes. Dauntless bodyguard. Okay. I can't stop it. We just need like a surveil card. That's that's pretty broken. That's that's pretty good. I mean, it, it's it's just exactly where we want to be. I mean, yeah, he's like, well, I can give it, um, I can give it minutes, and then I can't block with my death touch, dude. But this will, jeez. Swift Blade Vindicator? Sure. Well, we know what his other two cards are, so... That's okay. I'll 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 let this one happen. It doesn't raise its power larger than Yeah, we're doing this. Murmuring Mystic. It doesn't raise the power. Above two, which means if he goes to cast the second one on on the Swift Blade Vindicator, then I can steal Moment of Craving it. Now we've got a second Murmuring Mystic. Um, if it would have increased the... Uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying power. I meant toughness. Alright, so now this one we don't let resolve. I mean, he might have something here. I don't know what it would be, but he could have something. Two wizards is sick. Yeah, Murmuring Mystic's pretty good. He should be in bed. He's not in bed yet. Uh, he took a late nap. Man. He takes a nap after 3 o'clock. It's a nightmare. Nightmare! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. <clears throat> Almost there. Almost there. Like that's... That's bad luck for the opponent right, right there. All right, we go. We go into game three. <clears throat> uh, okay, so kind of like where we were at. Um, maybe if we can stay in control of things, Notion Reigns better than Disinformation Campaign, but. 
I think this information campaign may actually be good against a Boros deck that doesn't have many ways of drawing cards. So maybe this hand disruption is exactly where we want to be. Um, I'm definitely big on the the essence scatters here and setting back and playing the game slowly though. So um, I thought about it. I did I did the math, but we would only be swinging for eight, and he was it. It didn't change the clock any. If it would have changed the clock, I would have. Um, I did the math on it, and we would only we would have only swung for eight. But I thought about casting sink of paper zero. Um, the hand's not horrible. So, all right. Well, he could just beat us to death with virtually nothing. So this could be bad. Like Goblin Banner bet into, you know, something, and then the opponent actually used the cards properly, and we could be we could be looking at a nightmare situation. A nightmare situation. And so far, we've done good with the devs decks today. I I would like to, I'd like to keep them going. I'd like to keep um, the win streak going here. I'm gonna get our black source. All right, so we're definitely gonna be taking a hit. Need to get into that golden demise. That moment of craving's pretty sweet, ladies and gentlemen. That is pretty sweet. I'm just gonna pass. <clears throat> this will be a paddling for sure. Maybe. Maybe it will. Maybe we get our spanking. Um, but maybe not. Looks like he's got a play he wants to make. There's an, uh, another Adanto. Um, <clears throat> we got to get his best thing here. We can't. We can't allow much more than this. Um, best thing is what. Tajik, man, we need to draw cards. We need to draw some cards. All right, so we get rid of Tajik. Demir Guildgate. Let's put that on in the graveyard. <clears throat> and uh, next, we're looking for. Like, we got to stay alive here. Golden Demise, man. Got to get to that Golden Demise. I think I pitch like everything that's not Golden Demise right now. Maybe. Maybe not. Like, uh, Evolving Wilds cracked that dis, um, dispersal. So, yeah, we're digging for a Golden Demise. Or another Moment of Craving. Moment of Craving buys us time. Okay. Um... So I can actually Evolving Wilds next turn? Yeah, this works. This works. Let's cast Discovery Dispersal. Night... Ooh. Murmuring Mystic. And Night Vale Predator. Let's go Graveyard Top. And then we'll pass the turn. Like, this seems pretty good. <clears throat> I've got to get rid of the Adanto. I mean, we take our we take our beats. We get rid of the Adanto. Now our opponent is so mana screwed here, though. Like. It's just been a nightmare for our opponent. But he's still come out with a good fight. Um, not, I'm not going to try to take anything away from the opponent here. He's still putting up a great fight. Alright, so we thin the deck. 
we we get to discovery dispersal um dis well disinformation campaign first then um dispersal if it'll land off the top it may just be disinformation campaign no i i think we make a blocker right so he dauntless bodyguards protects this if he does <clears throat> if he doesn't give it trample then i'm not that worried about it all right so let's go ahead we'll sack more black mana so yeah he doesn't swing here and I don't think we swing yet either all right so he played the dauntless bodyguard we did get another land I'm gonna go ahead and crack this now again thinning my deck before I make my other plays so we'll go ahead and get the island Disinformation campaign draw card. Syncopate? That's not bad. Um, I'll pass. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll, I'll just pass here with the syncopate. Um, so we'll see how this goes. We're at thirteen. I've I've got a little bit of time. And the opponent has to play stuff. He's he, he can't win with what he currently has on the battlefield. I'm not I'm not wasting that syncopate. I am being greedy here though. He's got what? Swift Blade Vindicator and I'm leaving up the blue. Um because if we hit a land I can leave up Essence Scatter as well. Night Veil Predator. I was really hoping for a land there. Alright, well. We'll pass. He's going to draw some cards. Syncopate for one. The opponent still hasn't hit land. Man, like, if you, I, I feel like if the opponent would have hit some land, I would have been in some major trouble. I don't think we're just dead here, though. Matt1515, you're so close to 350 subs. Well, congratulations, buddy. Congrats. Oh, my goodness. All right, so... Disinformation campaign. He loses a card, I gain a card. All right, price of fame... Doesn't do me a lot of good here. Um. Okay. <clears throat> here we go. We'll see what happens. He discarded an Aurelia. <clears throat> I mean, Mana Screw happens, but the Boros Legion is fighting on, right? 
You guys are right about that. The Boros Legion fights to the very last breath. Well, I don't know if Aurelia works or not because because of this. So we'll stop that and we'll make an extra bird. And that's the last card in our opponent's hand. So now he's living off the top deck. And we get to do the slow and steady. Oh, sending a message. Sending a message. If I'm, if I'm in a position where I feel like I can start turning things sideways, it's um, probably a bad... Like, it's taken us forever to get there, but this is magic. We're getting there. I mean, our poor opponent here stuck on lands with his deck full of one mana and two mana creatures, so... I assumed that it was a decision by him to run a very low number of lands, and um, some of those enter the battlefield tap. Assert dominance, one bird at a time. That could be a t-shirt, Murmuring Mystic, asserting dominance, one. Man, what do you pump here, dude? He's actually pumping at the beginning of combat, bat, so he's starting to discover how Mentor works. Okay. And then he decided he's still not going to... We will counter Adanto Vanguard. Make a bird. Demir Guildgate. Swing for two birds. What's up, Her uh, Curtis? How you doing, sir? Just these slow, like, drawn-out decks or drawn-out games. Make him use all of his mana, I guess. So he spends all of his mana. Like I'd, I'd rather him do that than spend it here. Okay, there's one. Now we price a fame it. Gonna, yeah, go back to the jewel, your jeweler that sold it to you. Make him give you every carrot. Don't mess with that. Um, we'll go graveyard top. We get to do some surveilling, which means we get some guards. We get to do some other stuff. We get our disinformation campaigns back. It's happening. Yes, it's an Eminem song, right? Welcome. Well, welcome, welcome to um, the 21st century. People have heard of Eminem there, Madness. Uh, okay, so... I'm just playing Murmuring Mystic. And swinging with three birds. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sorry. Sorry. 
Um, he has conceded from the game. Ah, ah, ah. Because next time we swing with four birds. Uh, actually, we would have swung with five, but still. Ah, who's Marshall Mathers? He's the real Slim Shady, dude. Okay, one deck to go. Here we go. By the way, guys, we're doing this live. Winning, winning. The one who stood up. Ah, he did, he did. All right, don't have to look at the chart for this one. We're playing the Rakdos deck. I mean, is it? Um, um, Selesnia. It's right here. Okay, All right, sorry. Uh, trying to liven things up in here a little bit, and you guys just think I'm weird. All right, winning, uh, winning all night long. All right, so here we go. We haven't won them all yet. There's one more to go, and um, this is the one that, that somebody in chat said they thought was the weakest. Uh, so the idea here is to um, to, to kind of go wide. Right, um, we've got one of our three rares of the night in um, Lena Self Champion. Uh, when um, Selfless Champion enters the battlefield, Selfless Champion, sorry, enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 white creature token for each non creature you control. All right, so sorcery speed, maybe big um, conclave tribunal type thing. I don't know. You can sacrifice her, and creatures you control with power less than her power gain indestructible until end of turn. So all of our little dudes will become bigger dudes, and um, you know we we get to we get to play around with um, with some tokens builds here. So let's get rid of these cards. We will. Um, We'll start thinking about some some nice um, sideboard options as we go through this. Now, um, you, we want to have multiple creatures to make our our Lena work if we can. Uh, we've got you know Convoke, which also wants to have more creatures. The Rosemane Centaur, Convoke, Vigilance. Um, like it's a four four with vigilance, not bad. And if we can get this down early, that's that's pretty good. Uh, we've got the the unicorn four mana for a two two and when it attacks creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn so another kind of like anthem of, uh, effect uh, we've got conclave tribunal which you know answer anything uh, we've got ladev champion the dev champion um, ladev champion attacks you may tap any number of target creatures you control and ladev champion gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each creature you tap um, you can also use Ladev Champion to um, as a late game mana sink to pay 5 mana um, and just make 1-1 one, one creature tokens with lifelink. Now, uh, we've got other things that care about our creatures being, uh, you know, are us being wide and having multiple creatures because we have Shana Sisei's Legacy, which can't be the target of abilities your opponent controls. Now, it can still be the target of cre of uh, targets, I mean, of uh, spells, but not abilities. And then um, she gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control. If you play her by herself, she counts herself. She will be a one one. And then uh, we have Sapperling Migration, which can make us two Sapperlings, or if we um, kick it. For uh, six mana total, uh, we can uh, get four tokens. Now uh, we can get tokens when our haunted witness dies. We can get um, you know tokens for having multiple creatures on the battlefield when um, has has the marshal um, attacks with other creatures. And then if we have a martyr of dusk down and it dies, we'll also get tokens. And then once we go really wide, we can you know. Um, call on the blessing of the city to buff our creatures and um, go in for that alpha attack, which um, can also be done with our flower to flourish. Now, technically this deck's running like 25 lands. Uh, the deck's going to probably feed us lands pretty well because of the flower flourish. We can use flower. We can. Uh, we also have 21 lands, so um, pretty, pretty straightforward there. Um, I'm going to start this out with grabbing, do we want Knights of Grace? Like, do we want more creatures in the sideboard? I doubt it. Uh, let's go Binding. 
All right, so we want some bindings, right? We definitely want bindings in the sideboard. We've got Conclave Tribunals, but I think we want some bindings. We probably want some baffling ins, like um, like before with the white cards. Reclamation Sage, Binding, Song of Freilis, etc. Okay, so I like I like Rex Sage, and I like um, I don't know about Song of Freilis, but Song of Freilis would probably be really good in this deck. Um, allowing this just uh, to do some some crazy things. So um, again, we're we're trying to keep these without um, without um, without actually having to you know pull more than just commons and uncommons. Now I may not have some of those commons and uncommons, but we'll see. Waiting on it to load. Binding uh, blinding fog gives you uh, your boys hexproof for three mana. Okay. There we go. Okay, so do we want we we, we want to stick with? The, I don't think you actually need cards like Demystify and uh, Destroy Target Enchantment when you have like four main board, um, four main board Conclave Tribunals. You got some Ixlons Bindings in the sideboard. I feel like you should be able to deal with enchantments like problematic enchantments. Um, so maybe maybe not go that route. Um, sheltering lights. Like I think I think we want to go like wider maybe. Um, it, like cards that would protect the entire team. So maybe the uh, make a stand I think make a stand would be good. Um, yeah, I we're definitely going to go with naturalize cuz you know we want to stick on the the cheap idea here um what is this song adonto's vanguard would actually be really good in this deck uh, cheap card not not very expensive uh i think even deb said that it would fit in the deck um like i would like to have adonto's vanguard Adamant Wheel? No. Pride of Conquerors. I mean, we're already running Pride of Conquerors. Seal Away. It's an uncommon. Like, it's a good card. Seal Away is a great card. Alright, so let's, uh, let's grab a couple Natural Eyes. This is my this was my favorite art and it was used for M19 and I, I thought that was awesome. Like this is what naturalize means to me as a card. Like I'm I am going to turn your sword, what you're using to kill me, into a tree branch. So, you know, that sort of thing. Um Crawl Harpooner could probably fit in the sideboard. As an extra, you know, like little thing against like um I mean we've got a bunch of creatures, so you know, throwing har crawl harpooner in the sideboard might not be too bad. Um, I kind of like that idea. Three three harpooners. Now we're. So you guys are saying like song of Freilis. I don't know. Untamed Kabu. Does he fit? Is this the deck he finally fits in? Vigilance trample is kick. No, not really. I mean, you pay five for it, and you get a you know five five. Brontodon? Hmm. All right, so now we're getting into some of the cards you guys are were mentioning. Um, make a stand. I think make a stand is our protection, our go-to protection here. And then, what else? Do we do we have any other? trusty card. So you guys are saying blinding blinding fog. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to creatures this turn. Creatures you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Um I don't think I'd ever bring it in. I'm just gonna play with the crushing canopy as an extra answer against flyers. Um 
I think that works. Yeah, I, th I think that works. I mean, maybe we actually run Rex Sage over Crushing Canopy. But Rex Sage doesn't deal with Flyers. We gotta have the Harpooner, right? Let's go with Rex Sage. Yeah, I kind of like Rex Sage. Gives us a couple more creatures to bring in. We can be even more aggressive in the um, the sideboard. This is this probably isn't right. There's probably a lot of other cards you could run. A Ashes of Abherent is dank. Um. I don't know how. Like, like, what is it good against? Like, what, what is Ashes of Ad Adher? What is that good against? I don't even know how to say that word. All right, so we're gonna get into the last game here. Abhorrent, Ab abhorrent, aberrant. Would it be aberrant? Would, it, would that be? I don't know. Probably close. Dusty three one one eight six. Okay, I mean. Sure, I mean, we've, we've got creatures, we've got things we can do, so here we go. We'll get started. Sacred Foundry. Legion's Landing. Alright. So, we're just gonna, we're gonna flood out with our 21 land deck. Abhorrent? Aberrant? I think it's like Aberrant. Aberrant, like the the H is just kind of in there. Maybe not. I don't know. Don't listen to me. Not on English, anyway. Wow, opponent. Wow. Just wow. I'm impressed. I am super impressed. Has the champion. So he's going to flip this Legion's Landing on us. And then I've got to deal with that. And then he's going to... After he flips that, like we're looking at him going Heroic Reinforcements next turn. Jeez. Alright. Let's get rid of a Life Linker. So, like, he just does nothing this turn or a little bit more pressure to the board. Takotli Honor Guard? Okay, that's fine. Another Takotli Honor Guard? So yeah, he's just getting ready for the reinforcements here. Um, I could flower to thin the deck, but I'm not going to. I'm going to throw up Mala Dove Champion. I mean, he's down to one card left in his hand, but he's got enough mana and he can just start using this Adanto um, and, you know, it slowly become a nightmare for us. Lava Coil on Ledet. Okay. Alright, that's... that's. It's not the, like, end of the world. We take four here. Sure. Sure, I take four. Give me a, like, a Sisse. Another Ledev champion. Not what I was looking for. But okay. Alright, we're not, we're not in the, in a position to start swinging yet. We can do some damage to him through a Danto Vanguard, though, if he wants to swing with it. And he did. He did want to swing at it. So we are starting to do damage. I mean, we swung for four there. All right, we'll continue to just pass. Yeah, he's going pretty wide. Like this will, this will end up becoming a nightmare. I, I need to be able to remove some dudes here. So, I'm going to be kind of, yeah, 
All right, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. All right, so we only get the plus one. All right, so let's go in for blocks. We'll block in a block here. We'll block. here block here I guess we just make things happen um, I mean this is gonna like trade off eventually <clears throat> so we'll, we'll make some trades I mean he's gonna get some things back but we're gonna make some trades oh man history of Benalia Mazda Marsh. I call it Mazda Marshall too. Um, Hansda Marshall. Twenty-one land deck, loving on us over here. It's sorcery too. Sorcery. What a nightmare. You want to know how hard I can punch? I take it. I'm just going to take the hit. Another history of Benalia. Oh, look. A memorial. Isn't that so sweet? Oh. You get pity past Marshall and Giraffes. <laughs> Sad. All right. I mean, it's a pretty nightmarish situation here. He made a dude. His dudes get dudes. Or his dudes get bigger. Oh, man. All right. So we jump block. Jump block. Man, drawing like some type of board wipe would just be nuts. But it's not in the deck, so we can't. You want to buy a history ban? <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Understood. Um, hey! Hard cast it like a boss. We're at one. Look at all those knights. These are knights. These are soldiers, vampires. I mean, he's got he's got a plethora of things. Human soldier. <laughs> Why you didn't just turn things sideways, opponent? I don't know. Uh, but you know that's that's a pretty safe way of going about it, I guess. Um, okay. Uh, what can we do against our opponent? So baffling in seems like it's going to be pretty good. Um. Man, just I think against this aggressive deck, I don't think the the unicorn really really works. So I'm gonna take the unicorn out. Um, so Knight of Grace is actually really nice. I, let's take out Hazda Marshall as well for Rex Age and a Naturalize. Um. I actually think I want two natural eyes in the deck. I'll take out a Ledev Champ. I don't, I don't think Ledev Champion's a good card. I just don't. Um, like, I would I would almost, like, Bindings? Uh, what do we, 
Uh, well, I mean, okay, so he's got like a bunch of four ofs and everything. We hit a binding on. We we just rack right. Um, I, I I get that sentiment. I, I think that, that that would be doable, but um, I'm going to keep this in. I mean, we got two lands. This will work. Cast flower for um, a green. We'll go get a white and go from there. I mean, it's not like the, the most powerful turn one, but it's not horrible. He gets a Haunted Witness. We'll play... Shot? I mean, what does he get through for one this turn? Didn't swing. Just didn't swing. Okay. Okay. So... Bam. Let's see if I can get in for two. I like it. I like it. I don't know what you got going on there, opponent, but I like it. So is this history of Benalia time? Tajik. Tajik's a card. Haste with some mentor. Oh yeah. That that's a that's a thing. So I'll block Tajik. Martyr. I mean, you can always pay to give uh, Tajik first strike, so I do have to be wary if he leaves up mana. Look, a rare rare has appeared. A wild Tajik has appeared. Um, heroic reinforcements. All right, there it is. The nightmare of situations. Um, okay. I mean, go get him, Shauna. Get in there, girl. Like, this is on you. Go kill him. <sighs> the rare, rare. Oh, gotcha. Ah. All right, so he's... Can't keep her down, though. All right, he just gives it first strike. Sure, he doesn't apply anything else to the battlefield if he gives it first strike, right? We get another life linker. Vampire is white, life link. All right, we're back to riding Shauna to the end. Coal. That's a lot of coal. Uh oh, that's gonna be a nightmare.
So we let him block thinking he's going to get a 4-4 Angel. You also act like, yeah, you know, I'm... Legion War Boss. What a great card to follow up after a Divine Visitation. Adanto Vanguard. These are all great. Another baffling end off the top would be sweet. When you're this good at magic, ladies and gentlemen, nothing else really matters. Um, so he can take four instead of five by putting a Danto in front of it. It's a bad play. I mean, why would you take five when you could take four, right? Like, putting a Danto in front of this and activating would have been a better play. Now he can't even swing with the Adanto. Shauna. She's the legacy. She's the one. Heroic reinforcements. All right, he's coming. I mean, we're still at 15. He can't swing. Probably should have got the haunted witness. So does he put this and everything else in front? So if he puts like if he blocks everything here. There we go. That works for me. Legion's landing. Legion war boss, that's not great. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> this changes things. Alright, Memorial's not bad. Can't swing yet, though. What a nightmare. Well, you gotta swing with it, buddy. So we'll eat that. Ooh, sapperling migration. I'll pass. You know what? Actually, I'm going to swing. Yeah, I'm going to swing. We get to make some really, like, make her really big here. So, I mean, he's, he gets, he has to do some, like, very unfavorable blocks. There we go. <clears throat> like that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll sack. We kill, we kill some things. Um, not killing the Haunted Witness means he has less creatures. And we get to deal with more tokens that way. Which means it's, it's going to be even harder for him to flip the Adanto. Um, when's the last time we saw a land in this deck? Last game, we saw them all.
he's going to make dudes, which is which is fine. I mean, that's kind of what we're expecting here. We've got to get through all of this to finally grind our opponent down. Oh, I can't. I can't do it that way. I want the kick because I would like to be able to get more, but we're in a, we're still in an okay spot. Ooh, opponent's keeping a card in hand. Would they have champ? Gonna keep getting in. <clears throat> we'll put the opponent at one. Playing magic on a budget. You gotta, you gotta slow everything down. This has been a long stream, but so far, like. It's been pretty good. I can't believe these these pictures didn't load. Um, he may be scooping. We may be going to the the game two here, or game three. All right, game three. Whew. Can we pull it off? Can we go five for five? I think Harpooner wins a lot of this fight. Conclave Tribunal for Ixalan's Binding. I'm going to take her out. I would, I guess, rather have more removal. Pride of Conquerors seems like it's going to be good, though. Um, I'm going to take a Flower to Flourish out and another Rosemane Centaur. Although Rosemane Centaur being like a 4-4 with Vigilance might be like the card that trumps this entire game. So maybe I shouldn't take that out um, and just leave out a con like one of the Conclaves. Cut down on a price on a Pride of Conquerors. Maybe cut down one Haunted Witness. Play like that. Ugh. We'll see. Don't drop Conclave. Don't drop a Conclave. Drop a Conclave? Okay. Okay, here we go. Seems like a kind of hand where we draw zero green sources and, and lose. Um, does this win against an aggressive game, game plan? How do we win versus an aggressive game plan? We don't, right? We just don't. <laughs> Top decks. Top decks are how we win. This doesn't really do it either, but um, we're going to give it a shot. Oh, yeah. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. We can deal with that. Come on, baffling ends. Opponent, getting in. For the opponent. Go ahead and cruel harpooner. This should put some breaks on the opponent. So yes, we'll use the ability for zero. I mean, it stops one ones from just like going crazy. History of Banalia. Oh my goodness, Shauna says legacy. So if this was Conclave Tribunal, we would be able to get. Get rid of that. 
is not. So we cannot. Yet. I'll take the two. I don't think it's advantageous to, to trade yet. I'm going to get the history. And then we'll pass. Okay. Um, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're, we're getting there. All right. He's going to flip. I'm going to take four. He makes another dude. He lava coils our lady. She's a good lady, though. I like her. Yeah. Uh, um, we baffling in a knight? Seems bad, right? Uh, we sit back and defend. Aurelia. Oh my goodness. Give me another crawl harpooner off the top. Actually, we don't have anything in the graveyard. Because Sisse. Yeah. What a nightmare. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ugh, we can't get the extra buff. All right. Make this trade. A dev champion. Sure. Heroic reinforcements. Well, it looks like the, this game's going to come to an end pretty quick. Um, Boros is definitely going to beat down Selesnya. Uh I think we fought pretty well, like trying to keep off the early stuff. But in the end, just didn't get there. Maybe I should block and then Pride of Conquerors there. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it. We're at one. Can't deal with what's on the board, so. Um, why did we allow any of the devs to stay in the champion? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And I, I don't necessarily think that's a good card at all. Hey, Super Secret X playing again. Um, anyway, I, I had a lot of fun with uh, with the night stacks. I um, I think that um, I'm going to agree with like most of the comment section and most of you guys in chat and say this deck definitely felt the weakest out of all of them. Uh, however, the, the deck still you know it it shows what Selesnya wants to do and it's definitely the epitome of a Selesnya deck. So if you're building this for um, those those um, you know. Let's. My, I'm just imagining a you know a a group of friends or you know um, some some kids or something. You're building this for those or for them. They're gonna have fun with it. Um, it may be the deck that sets out that that doesn't get played. You know when you're having two versus two or or something like that. But then again, if they're playing multiplayer, this may be the deck that wins them all because like it continues to go wide and can defend from multiple angles. I don't know. Um, but um, all in all. I had a lot of fun playing these decks tonight. I hope you guys had a lot of fun playing them. Dev, if you happen to see this because you've stuck around this long, man, um, thank you very much for, for everything you do. Um, you know, $5, $5 decks right before Christmas seems like a great great video so thank you for putting that out. Um, he did put out Hadana's Climb. I'm going to be playing that tomorrow night. And um, that's, that's what we've got. So um, I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun. We'll see you next time here on Cyborg MTG.